you can attend, if you see a, um, a county school board's event that's happening uh, throughout the month, you can attend the likes of Gloucester County's uh, virtual event and take part in any of those meetings throughout your, um, you know, your board uh, service and, and your, um, your term. So I am a huge proponent of that and just wanted to make that PSA. Thank you very much. And there's a lot of information that um, you realize once you start going that you don't know. So it's very helpful because it, it, is, it can be overwhelming with the amount of, of um, things that we're tasked to do and the amount of, of information that is kind of thrown at us. So it really does help listening to other districts and just learning all of the ins and outs because like I said, it can be very overwhelming um, as a new board member. Just be careful if you show up you, you become involved, and uh, I currently chair the, the uh, state school finance committee. And um, but it's important because a lot of the issues at the state level have a big effect uh, at the local level, and it's important to let people at the state level know what's happening at the local level. And it's just a, a great source of uh, resource for um, information about what's happening with school boards across across the, uh, the state. Um, you know, in, in the report on the on the fiscal, we, we you know, we, we gloss, even though it's this detail, we gloss over a lot of it. Um, the one where it says that the district expects to utilize health care cost waivers as an adjustment to the tax levy cap. Well, what does that mean? The thing is that if you involve in the New Jersey school boards and you begin to learn more about fiscal and finance. What that means is that last month the budget, we're going to be putting our budget together. Where does the budget come from? 80% from the property tax and from other sources. But you only can increase that property tax by a certain percentage, by 2%. We're now getting down to where this is going to be probably the only thing that we can we can garnish some more money on on this health care waiver adjustment. And so to understand that is to understand, you know, how we can keep our local district, you know, uh, with revenue coming in. And it, it can get complicated and get overwhelming, but I would just, you know, I, I, I echo because, because of how much time and energy I have put into New Jersey school boards. Um, and, and when you get on the legislative committee, and we're very fortunate too because the New Jersey School Boards Associations are representatives of local school boards. There's the New Jersey um, uh, administrators and super, uh, business administrators. Uh, David Oliver is the chair of that legislative committee. So, so when you're hearing it from the business administrators and you're hearing it from the school boards administrators, you get a better picture of like what's good and what's not so good for your district, and you make better decisions. And I'm not trying to be on a soapbox and lecture. I'm just saying that it's just, it's just. I have found, I've been very passionate about it because I believe that our district benefits from, from everybody being involved in it. Not to pontificate, not to say we need to, it's just that we make better decisions when we know more about what's going on. Tom, I'm wondering, after you know, hearing Sid, if maybe something we can bring up yeah. at, the, at the, the county meeting, then maybe get their thoughts well, on it. Well, you know, just to, just to clarify, what, what, what we were just appointed to is the New Jersey School Boards has almost like a United Nations. It has representatives from each school board, 588 districts across the state. So I'm now that delegate to this to this United Nations, this delegate assembly. But Kim is the alternate. But what it has a process of doing is that you, starting at the local level, can make a resolution and submit it so that it gets presented to that larger group so it becomes part of one of their beliefs in it and advocate for um, to the legislators. Um, and so you can't. So you start at the local level by making a resolution about a particular topic you feel strongly about. You pass it up through this process. It gets voted on at that level. And then it gets put on the policy of the New Jersey school boards, which they use to go to the senators and assemblymen to try and make changes, and, that, and that's how it works. So that's what you just approved is the, the uh, us represent. So that's what that's how it goes. I actually have a question in light of that. Um, in the 
in light of the public comment and SIDS um, comments and concerns, I was wondering, I mean, you kind of answered this too, but I was wondering on more of like a board level of our individual group, like in what capacity can we discuss these issues more? Because I think the board, before we take action, kind of needs to be on the same page about things. Mm -hmm. And environmental issues in the past, especially in our town, you know, we've kind of been split on, and I, I think it's important to just discuss and hear each other out before we even make action or, you know, go to a higher up. We need to be on the same page with each other. So I was just wondering, like, how can we discuss this and, like, what capacity can we discuss this? Like, when would be appropriate to discuss it? Because I think it's important to just discuss, just starting a conversation mm -hmm. about it. And it starts with people in, from the public letting us know, and we have to do something with that as a group. I think um, if we could all agree, we could all set a date to come here, a uh, casual meeting to discuss it and discuss other things that we may need to discuss and see what we can come up with with brainstorming together. Yeah. Um, so I'll, if everyone's in favor of that, I'll talk with Dave to see when we can come within a date that everyone, it work for everyone, and then we can put it together and then we can come up with an agenda of what we can actually discuss that night and come to a resolution of this. I don't know how it works, but like he seems like very educated on it, and I don't know. How He's very works. educated on it, but I would have to talk to Dave okay. to see how I that works because sure. I don't know. You know, I'm just sitting here, so I don't <laughs> want to cross anything that I'm not supposed to cross or invite <laughs> someone to something mm -hmm. I'm not oh, supposed yeah, to. Course. So I'll talk with Dave, and then once Dave and I talk about it, um, I'll include Dr. Connors, and then we'll get it out um, to the rest of the board members. Madam President, as, as you know, and, and I don't know, um, Mr. Madison, if you happen to know, but you know, I, I will state this plainly, um, though I have not yet adopted, but it is my goal to adopt uh, at least a hybrid vehicle and moving in that direction. Uh, my husband and I both, my husband has an environmental policy degree, uh, but David, as you know, and pardon the pun again, but I love it when I say it. Um, I, I've been leading the charge here on the board for us going uh, with EV infrastructure. The infrastructure has to come first, and then the vehicles come after that. Um, you know, I've been delving deep into that, as I know you have, and we've been, you know, partnering together to ensure that, you know, we secure any of those grants and, and making sure that we stump for them. But of course, it's, you know, bureaucratic and you know, red tape. Uh, but the infrastructure has to come first. We have to lay that firm foundation, get everything, you know, uh, well situated, funded uh, smartly, and, um, you know, make sure that we are at the forefront of that particular in initiative, which, you know, there again, Mr. Madison said it, right? Diesel, for any, you know, for all of us concerned about truck traffic, diesel will be going by the wayside in a matter of, you know, what are we talking now? Five to seven years, right? We're watching electric trucks really come into the forefront. So uh, quieter, less emissions, um, and we want our buses to be, you know, within that fleet. So, um, you know, that's something we're definitely passionate about. I'm on board with that. So electric trucks, electric buses, no emissions. Love it. Okay, so we've all agreed on that. Anyone else have anything else under new business they would like to discuss? Seeing no one else raise their hand, uh, can someone make a motion for adjournment? A motion for adjournment. Second. Second. All in favor? <laughs> Aye. <laughs> and we are adjourned. <laughs>